Well, AMD was not the only company showing off their upscaling techniques at Game Developer Conference. We also have more information from Intel, and I'm definitely gonna compare some of what I think are the biggest standout differences between the two technologies, because they're definitely not exactly the same thing and seem like they'll have some different pros and cons. I can't wait till we can actually get hands-on with these things and review them. Anyway, there's a few other quick hardware news articles I'd like to skim through quickly before we dive into that main section. First of all, there is a leaked benchmark of the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. This is the 3D vCache version. And this is compared to the 5800X in the, uh, I believe it's Geekbench. Now, the interesting thing here is because of the 3D vCache, the X3D version of the chip actually is clocked slower than the normal 5800X, but it has this massive increase in cache capacity, which in certain situations, like gaming specifically, it should be able to get a big performance advantage. And this is coming, I think on, what is it, April 20th? and it should uh, be a, a list price of $450. Now what we're seeing here is a leaked Geekbench score with the 5800X 3D compared to the 5800X. And while the single core performance doesn't seem to be much different, in fact, it seems to be slightly worse, the multi-threading score is better. And so I think this is just highlighting the fact that it's not in every situation where the 3D vCache version is going to be an improvement. Um, but it is going to be an improvement in gaming, at least that's what we expect. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on to another topic, which is we should be seeing an RX 6400 available on the DIY market. I feel like I am, ah, ah, kind of in the way on some of this stuff. Uh, and this I'm getting once again from video cards, although they are saying that they found this from a gigabyte technology RRA filing where they're listing a model name GVR64 Eagle for uh, GD, which would sound like an RX6400 Eagle. Now there's already OEM versions of the 6400s. This would just make it added to the DIY market. Now, if you're hoping to game on one of these things, remember how critical people already are of the 6500 XT's gaming performance. And remember that the uh, 6400 is cut down to about three quarters of that. So I think this is more hopefully just like a cheap discrete GPU if you're trying to make a system like maybe you don't have uh, an integrated graphics chip. I'm not gonna say this thing's gonna be a gamer, guys. Anyway, another quick thing, we're seeing that Forspoken is gonna be featuring a lot of big new graphics technologies as well as direct storage. So we recently got direct storage confirmed and Forspoken has already given us some info on the load times in their game using these. These screenshots are taken from a video that you can watch on YouTube, and they're showing that with an M.2 SSD, now they don't specifically state this is NVMe, but I would assume that it is, which is where direct storage works best. They're seeing that a load time that on a hard disk drive, an HDD, took 21.5 seconds. It only took 1.9 seconds using direct storage on that M.2. And using direct storage on a normal SATA SSD, they're getting 3.7 seconds. So this is definitely working best on the NVMe drive. And they give another load screen comparison where they're seeing 1.7 seconds versus 19.9 on the HDD and 3.2 on the SATA SSD. Now they're listing all of these as using direct storage. So I think the idea here is you could program the game to work with direct storage, but to actually see significant performance benefits, you're gonna be want to, want to be on the NVMe drive. If you're more curious about that, um, Microsoft put out a developer blog um, for, related to their DirectX stuff with, uh, uh, explaining why NVMe is the best option for direct storage. The basic idea here is that direct storage kind of skips over the CPU. It, it loads things straight into RAM and then to the GPU. And then the GPU can take these massive batches of in-out information and decompress it and, and deal with all of it with parallel processing, which is a lot more efficient than one at a time operations that are filtered through the CPU. And again, you could kind of read into here why exactly Microsoft says that NVMe happens to be the best 
uh, way to utilize that. Last quick thing before we get into our main topic is that we're seeing that PCIe Gen 5 cable adapter will be coming with the RTX 3090 Ti graphics card, which is coming soon, I think March 29th, I believe. And so it's gonna be featuring the PCIe Gen 5 cable when you actually look at the attachment to the card itself. But this is gonna be the equivalent of three eight pin connectors. So you'll get three eight pin power connectors going into your single uh, pin connector. So people, I, I saw comments on some of my videos about this, like you're gonna need a whole new power supply to run this. No, you just use an adapter, but anyway, there's that. Let's hop back into what I think is my main topic today, which is let's compare what information we got about XCSS to what we know from AMD about FSR 2.0. Now, in my opinion, the biggest you know, the, the most interesting difference, well, one of them, <laughs> is the scaling factors. So Intel doesn't, well, I guess they are branding it. So they have a ultra performance, performance balance quality and ultra quality. And it seems like there's starting to be some standardization between AMD, Nvidia and Intel now on what these word branding labels actually mean. So with quality being a 1.5 scale factor, ultra quality being a 1.3 scale factor, balance being 1.7, all of that. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is if we compare it to what we just got from AMD, their recommendations for FSR 2.0 start at the quality setting, which once again is 1.5 per dimension scaling factor. But FSR 1.0 had an ultra quality setting, which had a 1.3 scale factor. In other words, you could get closer to the native resolution and still get some performance benefit out of it. Whereas FSR 2.0, now there's absolutely no reason why a developer couldn't choose to offer a 1.3x scaling option, other than the fact that these techniques require frame time to process. And AMD said that they're, you know, uh, that a 4K render at their quality setting could take at up to 1.1 milliseconds to process on a 6800 XT. So I think what Intel is claiming here is that their processing time could be low enough that you could still get a significant performance boost out of a 1.3 scale factor. And that does seem to possibly be a difference when compared with AMD's technology. Now, it's also important to keep in mind um, that there's gonna be more performance overhead on the Intel GP, uh, well, on, on non-Intel GPUs. And that's another thing that I wanna get into here, which is the support for these cards. So, both Intel and AMD are trying to offer better, uh, I'm gonna make myself like tiny so I'm out of the way here. They're trying to offer better support. Actually, I think I just fit better over here. Hi guys. Anyway, they're trying to offer better support than Nvidia does. Nvidia has locked down their DLSS technology to Nvidia and not even just Nvidia, but their RTX cards with the tensor cores. Um, Intel, despite using machine learning, unlike AMD, is offering a DP4A fallback for their processing, as well as, I guess, supporting anything that has XMX um, uh, matrix acceleration. Although, to my knowledge, the only cards right now that would have that are the Intel Arc GPUs. And you can see, although we have no idea what the scale is on this or how accurate it is, that Intel is saying that the processing time, that's this blue stuff, for adding on the processing of their XCSS technology is smaller, certainly, on the XMX-equipped ARC GPUs compared to the DP, DP4A fallback support. But this is a big deal in terms of some differences here, because AMD released a slide showing that their uh, FSR 2.0, because it doesn't require machine learning, is gonna have very broad support. Going back to uh, NVIDIA's 10 series, as well as AMD's 5000 series, Vegas series, and here's the big difference, the RX 590 being listed here, I would hope it would also run well on a 580, but that is Polaris architecture. My understanding is that Polaris architecture does not have DP4A acceleration. 
uh, or support that instruction set or however you would say that. But, but in other words, I don't think XCSS would work on Polaris. Whereas um, FSR 2.0 has been explicitly listed as being able to work on Polaris. So there's definitely gonna be some differences in support for these, as well as in their rendering resolutions. And another big question mark is performance. And Intel is giving us some slides here saying that, you know, compared to like rendering at native 4K, a 1080p to 4K upscale, keep in mind that that would be the performance uh, quality preset, which is gonna ha require a lot of upscaling to actually look good. But they are showing how that compares to a 1080p native render versus a 1080p render with temporal anti-aliasing and then compared to a 4K XCSS upscale. And there does not seem to be a huge performance hit in between just a 1080p image with TAA processing and then adding in that extra XCSS, you know, special sauce to make it look so, so wonderful. <laughs> um, let's see, they got some other interesting slides here talking about uh, the frame times and, and all of that here, but basically with it being, you know, best, having its best boost in games with pixel heavy raster and lighting stages. And then we actually get some performance analysis here where we're seeing their ultra performance, performance balanced quality, ultra quality. And on the left here, this chunk of data is, it might be hard to see here, the slide's a little bit fuzzy, but this is 4K and RT. So this is 4K with ray tracing. And then on the right hand side here, this is 1440p with ray tracing enabled. And once again, ultra quality perform, uh, sorry, ultra performance, performance, balanced quality and ultra quality. So we're able to see in this particular application, which is the XCSS RENS demo. So this is not a particular game or anything like that. These are the performance uplifts that they were able to see. This is basically a, giving you the percentage gain. So if this baseline here is one, then running the ultra quality setting here at 1440p seems to be a 21% performance boost. Quality is 41%, balanced is 59%, performance is 79%, and ultra performance is almost double with a 97% performance gain. That's the 1440p results. And at 4K, we're seeing even larger performance gains with ultra quality giving you a 27% boost, quality a 53% boost, balanced a 80, is that 80? No, that's, yeah, that's 80% boost. And then we're seeing performance mode giving you a 2.2. So over doubling, 120% performance increase. And then um, uh, ultra performance getting uh, 2.53. But remember ultra performance is really like, when you see that with DLSS, for example, that's usually used if, if you're trying to run 8K for some reason. <laughs> okay, they also talk about their ray tracing support. and. In this particular demo, as I'm understanding it, what they're basically saying is that their performance relative to AMD and Nvidia kind of falls in between. Not talking about the absolute frame rates that you get, but your performance fall off by enabling ray tracing, unless I'm misunderstanding what this is saying. I think what they're basically saying here is, okay, their ray query technique, relative performance versus DXR 1.0 is 0.775 while they claim that, um, I think what they say here is that Intel states that this is a bigger performance hit than competitor one, Nvidia, while competitor two, AMD, takes an even bigger hit. And they offered some of their own conclusions as to why this happened, but I don't have the full GDC uh, you know, conference available to me to uh, take a look at. They also talked a bit about their uh, CPU side of things with performance cores enabled versus, uh, w or whether or not you have the efficiency cores enabled. And they were trying to show some performance benefits in especially specific tasks like physics uh, when they can be offloaded onto those um, efficiency cores and giving you some performance benefits in games. All right, that's the hardware news for today. I am really excited to see this competition uh, on these upscaling techniques. And I'm just hoping that maybe they all do great. Maybe one of them wins out. But I think if, if it was, you know, one champion wins it all, I think it's gotta be one of the ones with broader support. <laughs> Although I doubt it, uh, Nvidia would just kind of let DLSS fall by the wayside. It would be nice if we, if we you know, do see something with broader support like XCSS or AMD 
uh, with their FSR 2.0 uh, take the lead. I'm really curious whether we see big, um, both image quality differences as well as performance differences between the two. Certainly looks like AMD is going with the broader support route without requiring any sort of machine learning hardware. Well, Intel's being a little bit, well, more, way more open than, than NVIDIA, but they do need that DP4A, so some of the oldest GPUs uh, won't, won't be able to support that. But, you know, as time goes on, that will be less relevant, right? And we don't even have a particular launch date or, you know, game support list or anything uh, for this. So, so we'll see. Let me know what you guys think about all this in the comment section, and I hope that you all have an excellent day.